Hi, so we're back in Autodesk Inventor uh, 2021, and we are going to go ahead and create an assembly. So from the top, we're gonna go drop down assembly. Okay, and an assembly, remember our example of a keyboard? So our keyboard, if you can imagine every key would be a part, and then if you wanted to assemble the entire keyboard, that would be an assembly, all right? So an assembly doesn't store any part information. All it does is it goes, it finds a part file, it knows where the part file is, because you, you put it in there. It opens the part file and displays it, and then, and then uh, displays all the other part files in relation to each other, okay? So when, for an assembly to open, it has to have all of the part files to open right where it expects to find them, okay? And for this reason, we need to be organized when we do an assembly. So here what I've done is I've created four part files, okay? I've named them something that is, I can tell exactly what they are, right? Usually that's the uh, project. So in this case, it's a peg toy and then underscore and then the, and then what the part is. So in this case, round peg, side, square peg, toy, top. So just by looking at my part files and how I've saved them, I know exactly what is in them, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna start by placing in a component. So we're going to go up to the top in the assembly tab and click place. Then we're going to go ahead and click on uh, peg toy top. Usually you place the um, first component um, is the one that most of the components are going to be constrained to. So like your primary or most complicated component, right? Your central uh, part of the assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and click open. And notice here, let me go ahead and move the cube around. Notice that, and I can scroll wheel out so I can see the whole thing. If I wanna place multiple components, I can click, move the mouse, and notice I can place one, and I can just keep clicking to place multiple components. When I'm done, I can right click and click OK. I can Control Z to get rid of a couple of them. Okay, so now we have our peg toy top and notice that I can move it around, okay? So um, in previous versions of Inventor, they would automatically ground the first component. So we're gonna go ahead in our first component, we're gonna, or sorry, not our first component, our first part, we're going to right click and we're going to click grounded, okay? And what grounded is, uh, is that basically this, this component won't be able to move about in space. And it's going to help us out when we start to assemble things, or sorry, when we start to constrain things. Notice that the grounded component has this little uh, thumbtack in it on in the assembly uh, in the assembly area of the model uh, uh, tab here. Okay, when I hover over it, it also has that thumbtack. All right, let's go ahead and place the sides of our of our peg toy. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click side and open. I'm gonna I need two of these, so I'm going to click one and then two. Right click, OK. Now I'm going to constrain it. In this case, for the, our kind of simple constraints, we just need two types of constraints. So let's go ahead and we're gonna click constrain. You can think of constrain, constrain as glue, okay? So we are, gonna, we are gonna glue these parts together, all right? So, so basically we're gonna click constrain and let's go ahead and basically we're just gonna need this mate, mate, and mate flush. So if you can take your hands and there at your computer, hold them out in front of you. If you put your hands together, you've just mated your palms together, okay? If you hold your hands out in front of you and you um, hold one hand high and one hand low, uh, both palms facing the ceiling. If you then uh, move your palms, both still facing the ceiling, if you move them and you have them line up on the same plane, you have just uh, flushed your palms, okay? So you have, that's a mate mate, the palms are together, mate flush, they're both facing the same direction, but they're on and they occupy the same plane, they become coplanar, right? So those are our two types of constraints. All right, so let's go ahead and do our mate uh, mate flush and, and mate mates. So we're gonna work on one side first. So let's go ahead and we're going to, so mate, mate is selected. We're gonna look for this green arrow pointing off the surface and click to select that surface. We're then going to, um, to click on the scroll wheel to drag up and use the, uh, the cube, click and drag the cube to rotate. Then we're gonna click on the surface that that is going to be glued to. So there we go. And we hear the sound of the mate, <laughs> the call of the mate there. Okay, so now we have constrained it in one dimension, right? We're gonna go ahead and click okay, just for uh, just so we can take a look here. 
Okay, so notice that um, notice that if I if I click on the right hand side, notice that if I pull this, I can't. I'm clicking and dragging that. I can't pull it apart, right? I can move it up and down, but I can't pull it apart, right? If I move the cube over, so if I go to the other side, notice that I can move it from right to left. Okay. All right, so now I can, you know, it's still free in two dimensions, okay? So we're trying to eliminate all, you know, all freedoms of movement, right? Uh, degrees of freedom, we're trying to remove them, right? So we're, let's go ahead and constrain it again. This time we're gonna do a mate flush and we're gonna make the two faces coplanar. So let's go ahead and click, click and drag the cube and we're gonna select the top surface. Notice the green arrow. You don't wanna select, if we scroll in here, we don't wanna select this line. Okay, stay away from edges, all right? We want the right in the middle of the face here. We're gonna click on uh, mate flush, and then we're gonna click the other top surface of the, um, of the uh, peg toy here. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and click apply. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and click cancel. And wouldn't you know it, I've made a mistake. Okay, so basically what I've done here, can you see my problem? Okay, my problem is, is that I have constrained it to the wrong side. Okay, so I've made two incorrect constraints. All right, now, okay, so what do I do? Uh, I've done it wrong, and now I need to correct my problem, right? So notice that I have one degree of freedom here, but it's, it's totally wrong, right? Well, what I do is I'm just gonna go in and delete the constraints. So, so if, I, if I highlight the part here, and then I go over to the Assembly tab, I'm gonna ex, uh, expand it by clicking the plus, and then I'm just gonna right-click on the, on the constraints and delete. Right-click, select delete, and left-click, okay? And that way, when I'm working, I can basically, you know, if something goes wrong, that's the solution. You just click on the, um, the part, and then you just go in and, and delete the constraints. So let's go ahead and do it right. So, so uh, the, the, um, the, the side needs to sit underneath the top, so let's go ahead and constrain it. So we're gonna go ahead and do a mate-mate, and that's the top surface. So this top surface, we look for the green arrow pointing straight up. We use the cube, click and drag to rotate, and then we get the surface of the um, top, the bottom surface of the top. We click there and click, a, click to apply. And then we're just gonna jump into our next constraint. So rather than clicking okay and closing the constraint dialog, we just click apply and move on to the next one. So now we have a mate uh, flush and we're just gonna flush up the two sides to make them coplanar. So we're gonna click on the surface of the um, leg and the side surface of the top. You hear the sound of the mate there. And we're gonna go ahead and click apply. Okay, now our final one, we have one left. We're gonna click uh, the surface, it's a mate flush again. So it's the surface of the side, the front surface of the, of the leg and the front surface of the top. And we're gonna go ahead and click apply, okay. So when you're doing kind of um, kind of a, um, rectangular solids, most of the time it's going to be um, a mate and two flushes. So that's going to be basically it's going to be three constraints when you're starting out here. Okay. So all right, let's go ahead and do the other side. So notice that I'm not moving anything around. Okay. Notice that I place them initially kind of where kind of close to where they're going to suppose they were supposed to be, and now I'm letting the constraints do the work. So let's click on constraint again. And we're going to do the top of this top. So we have a mate mate. Notice we're going to click on the top of the top surface of the leg. And the, we're going to click and drag the cube around, click on the bottom surface of the top. Okay, notice it jumps down to satisfy the complaint. We're going to click the constraint. We're going to click apply. And we're just going to take a look real quick. We're going to close the dialog. And let's go back. Notice that if I click on a surface of the cube, it gives me a straight on view and I can kind of look and see that, hey, I can't pull it down, but it still goes side to side. Um, if I click around, right? Um, notice that I can do this. One thing I don't wanna do here, let's get a 45 degree view, okay? Now I know that this is a little bit off, okay? Now I know that this can't go up, right? Um, but let's take a look and it looks to me like if I'm a little bit off, it looks to me like I'm moving this out to the side here. Watch what happens when I turn this to the right. 
Okay, it's way off, right? Not only did I move it in one dimension, I moved it in two dimensions, right? So I thought I was moving to the right, but what happened was I dragged it well out into this dimension. So into the other dimension. So when you're doing this constraint, a very common thing to have happen is that you drag something and unexpectedly it goes way off into another dimension. So not way off into another dimension, it goes way off in the dimension you weren't trying to move it in. You know, if you're trying to move it on the x-axis, it goes way out into the z-axis, for for instance. So using zoom all is very helpful in that case. Um, also the undo. You know, if you if you get to a point where even zoom all doesn't work, if you click zoom all and it's so small you can't see anything, just go ahead and control Z and move. You know, control Z as many times as it takes to get back to where you know where things are, um, and that's a strategy that is that's best. Um, okay. Um, Let's keep going here. So we have our mate mate. Now we're going to go ahead and flush up the side. So we're going to click constrain and we're going to go mate flush and we're going to click the side of the leg and the side of the top and apply, apply, side of the top and the side of the leg and apply. Okay, so now we have, we are, uh, we have a situation where this is fully constrained. Okay, so we can't drag anything around. We're wiggling it as wiggling as, as we possibly can. Okay, so um, so we've got our legs on there and now we're gonna go ahead and do our uh, pegs. So let's go ahead and click place. We're going to go ahead and click our uh, square peg and click open and click once, right click okay. This time I'm just gonna place our round peg. I'm gonna click place again. I'm going to click round peg, click open, click to place, right click cancel. Okay, um, and now I'm going to go ahead and constrain the peg. So we want these to stay sliding. All right, so um, so first we're going to actually let's do the circle peg because it's just so easy. So we have, we're on mate, mate, and we're actually going to mate the center line. So let's go on the circular uh, peg there and see this dotted line that comes up. There it is. That's it right there. So the dotted line that comes up, that's what we want to mate. So we click the dotted line, the center line of the peg, and we're gonna to go to the hole, and we're gonna find that dotted line again, and click the dotted line and apply. Okay, um, then we're gonna go ahead and click cancel just to take a look. So we have this peg, right, and it still slides. We just are gonna leave it like that. Um, and now we're gonna do the, uh, the peg, so we're gonna click constrain, Click the side of the peg. So we're going to mate the side of the peg to the side of the hole. Which one doesn't matter on the first one? Okay, because it will just swing around to fit. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and click apply. Actually, we're going to click OK. Now in this case, the peg is uh, is in the way, right? So we can't really constrain it because the peg is in the way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be careful to only move things that when we're looking straight on at the model. So, so click the face and we're gonna move that peg out to the side. Um, and, then, uh, and then we can go ahead and rotate it. But notice by, by using the cube to look at the model straight on, we only moved it in one axis, which is, which is really important so we don't lose things. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is to click Constrain, and now we're gonna mate the other, you know, another side, a side that's perpendicular to the original side. So we're gonna go ahead and click the green arrow here and rotate around and then right on the side of the hole there. So right this face right here and click click to select and then click OK. All right, so now we have our uh, our peg tool is, is fully constrained or so we think. So so uh, let's let's actually check our work here. So so we have the peg toy kind of kind of constrained here on our basic assembly. Um, but let's go ahead and see if it is in fact constraint, all right? So, so for example, now I'm just gonna go ahead and let's make a mistake here. So let's remove one of the, uh, one of the um, constraints that we needed. So let's go ahead and click on uh, this, the leg. We're going to right click on one of the flushes and click delete, okay? So now notice that I have turned on the option to show and I wanna show you just something here. So we're gonna select everything. So we're gonna go ahead and click and drag over the entire model. We're going to right click and then click Eye Properties. We're going to go to the Occurrence tab, and then we're gonna click on Degrees of Freedom and make sure it's checked there, and then we're gonna click OK. Okay, so now notice 
that um, that we have three degrees of freedom. So notice that this peg, you can see that that green arrow denotes that we have one degree of freedom. That means that this this uh, part can move in one axis. The cylinder peg, uh, the round peg, can move up and down. It can also uh, rotate. Okay, so that is not fully locked into place. Okay, and then finally. Our uh, our leg, which should now those are correct. The pegs are just fine, but this but this leg shows that hey, you know we have a degree of freedom where there shouldn't be one. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that by going to constrain, and we're going to go to mate flush. Click on the side of the of the leg and the side of the uh, top. Click apply, and notice now that uh, degree of freedom goes away there. Okay, so that is how we do a basic assembly. Uh, best of luck.